Imagine you already have a business in India and it's growing very well at the moment. As a small medium organization, you also decided already to put your infrastructure in Azure and it is currently running well and we are obviously saving money here because we are following OPEX model. Hello guys, my name is Harsh Angra and we are trying to talk in this video about Azure regions and Azure geographics. Basically, Azure region is a very important point when we're trying to deploy our infrastructure in Azure because sometimes we feel, hey, we already deploy infrastructure in Azure and it's on the cloud, so there won't be a problem when anybody can access the resources. Yeah, I mean, definitely there won't be a problem, but there are some hassles. And let's talk about all of these challenges in this video. So as an example, we have already deployed our infrastructure in India region at the moment. And along with that, I also have created a website in the same India region. That means on Azure data center, but I choose India region at the moment. Now your team is planning to, you know, contact all of the audience across the globe and yeah, start sharing your website information to everyone. Now, finally, your request received from one of the guy who is sitting in US. Let me make this guy first. Handsome with one eye. All right. So this guy received that request from you and he start uh, thinking, hey, maybe this business idea won't be great for him and uh, he would like to know more about it. So basically he start accessing the website and for that he type, for example, www.xyz.com and request travel all across the world from one place or one ISP to another ISP and finally reach to the India region deployed website. Then the web server received the request and definitely he need to respond back with the information requested by the user. So he again traveled your request back all across the globe and finally reach to the US guy who requested to access the website. So basically point here to mention is the whole process travel all along from US to India will take time because your request is getting through from one ISP to another ISP and it's getting high latency to reach to the target resource. And with that actually, uh, you know, you are getting some problem because if your website is not responding as expected because people sitting in US will feel, hey, uh, you know, the website is uh, loading very slow and my internet access is actually 300 Mbps, which is absolutely great to access any website. So I think uh, the business model here, or I mean the website is not that great enough to look into. So let's leave and let's leave this business out at the moment. So yeah, definitely it's gonna be impact your business straight away. So that's why it's not a good idea to put your website in one region and suggest another region to access, which is definitely far away I'm talking about. So guys, all these challenges we are meeting in, uh, in the cloud platform as well. And to clarify that which region would be great for you, let's have a discussion more about this and try to understand more in both uh, situations for Azure regions and how regulations for the government's work in Azure. Actually, let's talk about Azure geographics in this video. So guys, let's begin. In cloud computing to understand about Azure region, let me help you to give this one sentence idea about Azure region. It is nothing but a bunch of data centers. Those are connected with the low latency network within the same geographical region of the country. <laughs> I think you get my point, but let me try to give you one example here. So it will be easy for you to even understand in a better way. So for example, uh, I have some data centers actually created in US. One is in this place. Another one is in this place. Third one is here. And for example, fourth one is here. So right now uh, I have connected all of these regions via a low latency network by working with the ISPs of the country. And definitely they must have some bandwidth and great high proficiency of connecting all these data centers on a very, very high network speed with a low latency network. So let me try to first join all these data centers together. Not only that, they must also have some redundant network connection as well. For example, like this, that these are connected uh, in such a way, in a spider way, so that if one of the network is disconnected, they must be have another way or connected by another way easily. 
So the overall concept to understand the region is that's how you start deploying your infrastructure. So the overall to understand about the concept, if you are already in US, it would be highly recommend to choose Azure region as within US or at least more near to you. For example, if you're living in Dallas or Texas, you must need to choose the data center created nearby Dallas or Texas as an example. So if you live in Washington, so you need to choose a data center near to the Washington, which can have a very low, low latency and you can have a great experience by using those resources. But imagine, the question here is, hey Hirsch, why we don't create the resources in, is in Australia? Is it possible? Yeah, guys, you can definitely create those resources in Australia, but every time when you're trying to access those resources, each time they have to travel your request all along the world and then Australia, and that can cause some delay on getting responses on your resources, or let's say you are accessing your virtual machine, you can find some lagging while using your mouse. So that is the best example to understand about high latency in terms of if we choose a far away region uh, to access or deploy our resources. To understand even better, let me take you to the world of Microsoft Azure and try to show you where exactly we have our Azure data center situated within Microsoft Azure network. Whenever we talk about Azure region, that means we are looking for a great performance while accessing our resources and we need a low latency so that we don't get any delay on accessing our resources, especially when you're trying to deploy an Azure VM or trying to access your databases. So to understand that more, actually I'm trying to give you one example in this particular position before to move forward on Azure networks for the data center. So actually, as you can see right now, I'm trying to show you that my current location is in Shanghai and I have created one Azure VM in US region, which is currently right West US 2, as you can see here. And when I try to access my resource, you can find some delay and some slowness because the, the actual resource is deployed node nearby my location. It actually deployed a very far away place in US. So guys, to understand that more, the behavior, the experience, let me try to connect this VM via RDP. You just need to follow that carefully. So now I have uh, started my VM. Currently it's in a running state. Now let's try to download the RDP access. So guys, uh, I'm going to now click on yes, so that after this you can see the experience while accessing my uh, virtual machine which I have actually deployed in US region. So let me actually make this in a small screen so that you can even see much more better experience to while accessing this particular VM. Now you will see how much time it will take and you can see the lagging right now on my screen because I'm currently uh, in, uh, in Shanghai and I'm trying to access my resource which is actually sitting in US. So this kind of experience we always get because it's a perfect example of high latency. I think you get my point here, right? Actually, I'm waiting and uh, would like to show you that how much time it just take to make my VM is available to access the screen. So guys, you can see this experience is actually very slow. And if I click like this, you can see how much slow my screen is and how this pixels is coming through slowly because it's actually sitting on the US server. So I'm trying to repeat the same thing again to make you understand because from Azure region, we just need two things, high performance and low latency. So make sure when you're trying to deploy any resource in Azure, try to deploy the nearby location where you are working so that you can get best experience from Azure platform. Now let's move forward to Azure platform and try to see where our data center is located and try to gather even more information from there. Finally, we are on Microsoft website where they have mentioned about Azure regions.
Actually, they have deployed these Azure regions with 60 plus uh, actually total number within 140 different countries. So what does it mean? That you can access, you can deploy your resources anywhere you want and you can get great performance with low latency network access, which means overall great feeling. <laughs> so yeah, if you, would, uh, if you would like to know more about Microsoft Azure regions, I would recommend you to go to this website and you can get more details about it. So let's try to understand more on uh, you know Azure regions and would like to share that what exactly information we need to understand about Azure regions. So start with very first one. So guys, whenever we are trying to or plan to deploy our infrastructure and uh, we would like to create a resource, we need to choose any of the regions from these blue colored dotted circles actually. Actually, these blue colored dotted circle means these are the Azure regions where anyone can deploy their infrastructure. To understand this a little bit more, let me take you to uh, the you know Azure Virtual Machine creation where we are trying to create a virtual machine and we can uh, choose Azure regions right there. So you can find this Azure region information right here. And within this, you need to choose any of the region which actually your organization need or you feel is a good to access your resource, you can choose any one of them from these all available regions. But there are a few interesting things about the regions. Let me help you with. So basically, as I mentioned, that available regions are these dotted uh, blue circles, not a dotted, sorry, blue circles, that's all. So uh, after that, there's another one with dot, dot, dot circles. You can find some Spain Central, Mexico Central, or even in Australia Central too. Basically these dotted circles means Microsoft has already announced that they are coming with new data centers or new region within these countries so that people can have more capacity and they can use more Microsoft resources with n numbers of resources they would like to deploy. So their entire target is just make sure that everyone can have all the resources or like how much or how many things they would like to deploy it within Microsoft Azure, it will be applicable for them. Basically, uh, we sometimes find some challenges that we are trying to deploy some resources, but it feel it mentioned that, hey, currently this resource is not available in this region because the capacity of uh, the Microsoft Azure data center is already gone to that particular you know region or data center so microsoft is pushing hard and trying to deploy more data centers for us now if you go a little bit more about this uh, after this dotted you can also find a blue circle with some kind of rectangular shape with a white actually dot which means that they are uh, having availability zones available now what does it mean Let's not talk about this in a video because the very next video is all about availability zones and we will talk about this in, in a while and uh, we will explain you that why exactly it matters when we are trying to deploy our resources. Now, along with that, there's a very last information I would like to share with you before we move forward to geographics from Azure. So basically, you can also find some US government, Virginia, US DOD Central, some of them like Germany Centrals or China East 2. These kind of a spatial countries and spatial uh, location, actually, it means that they have a very strict or compliance based data center actually created so that the, uh, the government entity or very secretive organizations like Department of Defense, for example. So they can deploy their all infrastructure in the cloud because I have mentioned uh, while I was explaining about private cloud and public cloud and hybrid cloud that some of these government organization may feel not secure to deploy their cloud infrastructure. So Microsoft took this uh, as a challenge and they start deploying this compliance paid based on spatial data centers or regions for these organizations or for these kind of government entities. Not only that, Microsoft also take this to the next level because whatever the people are actually working within these data centers or even supporting uh, these government entities whenever they have a problem, they are actually certified based on the compliance requested by these organizations. So they are very important persons and they are very much certified to handle these kind of organizations. 
So basically, Microsoft is trying to uh, handle every single customer across the globe because their, their mindset is empower every person in the world. So guys, that's all about Azure region and I think you can get more information in upcoming video, how you can start deploying in Azure regions and because we will choose every time whenever we are trying to create Azure VM or website or try to create a database, all sort of thing. So let's move forward with Azure geographics. We already know that why we need to choose Azure region in a right way so that you can get great experiences on using these resources. But with that, there's a very important factor we also need to think of always before deploying this infrastructure and that is Azure geographics. Now, why does it matter actually before to start deploying our infrastructure? So I'm actually trying to target for those uh, countries where uh, they have a spatial kind of compliance or rule and regulation on digital data, like, like you know, European countries, China, and some part of Australia, because they have a very specific guidelines they need to follow to protect their data, whatever is going or start deploying using cloud infrastructure. So whenever we need to choose, we need to choose the right region so that the data actually reside in that particular geographic area and it will not leave in any way to any other country. For example, if I'm working in China, uh, in Shanghai, and my company strictly mentioned Hey Hirsch, we need to create all those resources within China data centers. We don't want that our data, our data can go beyond the boundaries of China. So if that kind of limitation I receive, so I only and only focus on the data center which is currently available uh, in Azure for China and only stored my data in these data center. But by mistake, if I choose, for example, US data center, it means I'm violating my organization uh, guidelines because they have a contract with the you know government. For example, I'm talking about the government entity here and they have a contract and uh, they clearly mention do not create any you know resource in any other region except china and i'm actually you know crossing the limits so basically if these kind of situation happen you might sometime uh, in trouble so please we need to understand these boundaries and try to understand why it is very much important before to start deploying our infrastructure so whenever we talk about boundaries or geographics in Azure, there are two important points always comes in the mind. First, compliance. Yes, because as I mentioned, these countries have a specific rule and regulations and we have to follow that strictly. Second, the data residency, that these countries don't want that the data, any kind of data actually stored on these Microsoft Azure data center go beyond this limitation and Microsoft has a very, uh, you know, uh, strict privacy and, uh, you know, kind of trust policy with these governments or these countries that don't worry if you deployed your data centers or kind of infrastructure in these particular region, your data will not go out from these particular boundaries. So they have a very clear instructions on that. Now to understand this, let me try to, uh, you know, uh, make some shapes for you and try to give you more information. So basically I'm talking about that these are the regions I'm talking about here. The first one is like US region. The second one I'm talking about, let me create another shape, is, is actually European regions. This is very important. The third region I'm talking about, it's here, which is basically uh, in uh, sort of Brazil and Africa region. And the last remaining region here is all about Asia Pacific region or Middle East. Actually, you can take all, all of this. So point here to mention again that these actually matters when we start deploying our infrastructure. Now, if I take you a little bit extra and mile more, let me uh, take you back to the website and trying to give you more information about these things. In the end, we are finally on Azure Geographics website. And guys, I would highly recommend to go at least once to this website because it can give you a lot of information about you know, compliance, these Azure regions. Along with that, you can also find products by these different regions as well. So it is really a great way to understand and learn more about Azure regions and geographics. So basically, uh, if you need to understand Azure geographics, all our Azure regions is actually divided into four different parts. First 
is American, second is Europe, third is Asia Pacific, and fourth, Middle East and Africa. So if you need to understand, we need to go back to the same website, Azure Regions, and try to gather more information right there as well. So basically, if you can see all sort of Azure Regions in this area is considered as a part of America geography. The second one is right here. It is from uh, all Europe. The third one is right here. This covered uh, Middle East and uh, Africa. The fourth one is all about this. It actually has an Asia Pacific uh, geographics from Microsoft. So if you need to understand more about these old things and their related compliance, I would highly recommend to go to this uh, website again and simply follow all this information and go deep down and try to get as much as information you can get because it actually helpful sometime when you're trying to give AZ 900 examination. So currently I'm not going to board you to just keep repeating the same thing which is currently listed in the list here but with that actually I would like to give you some bonus here and that is exactly you can also try to get more information about the product based on these regions. For that simply you need to click on products by region and you can select any of the product you would like to understand let's say Azure SQL database you would like to know that this particular product is available in which countries in which regions so you can find all information easily right here. So actually it's a great way to choose you know, different kind of uh, offerings from Microsoft and can try to understand that these actually spatial anchors is currently available on these limited Azure regions. So it's really helpful and really great. Not only that, you can also try to uh, gather and understand about the Microsoft Azure network across these old countries because we talk about, you know, uh, latencies. Yeah, these all are connected and that is how you can sit anywhere and create resources at any uh, or in any Azure region efficiently without any problem. So all the information you can find here as well. And yeah, again, I don't want to bore you because this information pretty straight that these are the you know data centers information or edge sites available. That is how these all are connected to the data centers and that is how all your requests I have request I have mentioned in the initial uh, stage that if you have uh, sitting in India and you create a website, it has to go all along from this all from here, 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 and then reach to America and then person can access your website. So guys, these are actually getting some delays always. So uh, yeah, that to be all for today. I think we get lots of information uh, in this, especially we focus on two important things. Azure region, which is all about latency, low latency, high performance. That is only matters in Azure regions. And second, uh, the Azure geographics, which actually based on the compliance and data residency. So always keep in your mind because in the future, we are not going to repeat this again. So guys, that to be all for the day. And I hope you find this uh, video informative. I hope you like the content of the channel. If you have any suggestion and if you need any specific kind of training, at least you can share with me. I will try to keep that in the pipeline and create those videos and learnings or trainings for you in the future. So for now, uh, please guys, take care of your health, take care of yourself, your family, everyone's right uh, with you at the moment. And uh, yeah, live happily and stay strong. So I will see you in next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Peace.